Contrary to popular belief, and I know a lot of the racist people like to come into my comments and claim that I'm Jewish or that I'm a Jew or whatever, and they like to like use that against me. And though I consider Jewish people my cousins, as I really do the Palestinians, I am actually a Syrian, a Syrian, okay? And my family's from Iraq, okay? So we're basically all related, and I feel like that's how I felt most of my life. Even when I was a hardcore conservative and I said some pretty raunchy and inappropriate things, um, videos that are now privated, you know, this was like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 13, this was a long time ago, things like, you know, we should turn the Middle East into glass. Yep, after 9-11, that was definitely a thing we all said. That's pretty shitty behavior, okay? That's shitty behavior, and I'm glad that I said it as a person in her early 20s and not a person in her 50s, like a lot of the people who are now saying it are, okay? I'm, you know, I even made a video once, and, you know, Hassan's like my cousin, basically, so I once even made a video, this is way before Hassan, uh, saying that, uh, America, like 9 11 is kind of overrated, right? Because America causes 9 11 in people's worlds all the time. And so I thought Americans were being a little too middle class kid complaining about being poor. So I blashed out. But I grew out of that. And I did an introspection journey, I did an extrospection journey. I faced myself and I said, why did I even think such horrible thoughts about other people? And it was because I got it into my head that I was better than them. On the macro, none of us are better than each other. On the micro, when you move into your ego and you start to form values and you point fingers, there is a judgment that you can make without thinking you're better than other people. You can be compassionate and meet people where they are. And you can say, even though I wouldn't live that way, I'm not really sure why you're living that way, but okay, agree to disagree. Or in some cases, because we live in a society, we have to form laws that sort of cast a judgment and kind of ostracize people from society, which is not my favorite. I think, you know, rehabilitation is probably better. I believe in restorative justice. I believe in the idea that we should uplift the people that are doing the worst in the country, first and foremost. And, you know, that will trickle up. <laughs> I don't believe in trickle down economics, you know? Okay. We've all been on a journey in which we think poorly about people. But the one thing I have never gone through personally, and this is probably because I'm queer and probably because I was already a minority in a minority home, right? I was already a kid who was born into an immigrant home with parents who spoke multiple languages and a home that had different food and different cultural expectations that wanted to Americanize and modernize. And my parents did. They assimilated really well, right? But I knew I was other. It made it clear. And then within that bubble, my parents made it clear that queer people were other to them. So I was like triply, quadruply, we, you know, outside of the norm. And then I got diagnosed. And then, you know, I've like, um, you know, my mental health and remission is doing really well, but it's still like mental health where you go to, gotta go to a therapist and you get a diagnosis. But man, that even puts you outside of the bubble even more, right? Because you're not supposed to talk about those things. One journey I've never gone on, regardless of how many times I've been ostracized, is sort of the journey of thinking because of how people are born, they should be wiped out, like genocided. And, you know, for a long time over the last few years, especially in the last year with Israel and Palestine going the way that it is, people have said, you know, Israel's genociding Palestinians. And people are like, no, Israel's not. They're, self they're defending themselves. They don't want to kill Palestinians. And I'm like, okay, I'm open to all sides. Let's, let's, let's hear the story. What is the history? And you know, it's, it's very convoluted. And God knows we don't know what's going on because we're not a part of any of those bubbles and we're just here to observe it. But I kept hearing from some people, because I know, again, I know Israelis, I know people in the Middle East, like I know enough people connected to things that I'm like, okay, I'm hearing from all these people. And they're like, no, Israel just wants to defend itself. And Palestinians just want to live in a place where they feel at peace. And everyone just, and then you see videos on the internet of everybody killing and raping and just pillaging each other. And then you see videos on the internet and you're angry and you're like, what the fuck is this? This is gross. And then you're, you get angry on behalf of whoever you're watching getting the most beat up. And you're like, I'm going to, I hate the other guy because I'm watching this guy suffer. If I watch October 7th videos, my brain goes, oh my God, Palestine sucks. If I watch Palestinians getting blown up by Israel, I'm like, Israel sucks. So now I know everybody sucks. But the question is, when you judge a person and how they view a whole group of people, I think it's fair to say that regardless of how we feel about the nuances of the war, 
and the conflict in the Middle East that's been going on before, you know, long before any of us were born, that individuals on YouTube who have a platform who are saying certain things, I think we should all be able to say, regardless of needing to say, but what about the Palestinians? That wanting to genocide Palestinians is not okay. Okay? So yesterday I covered a story about the two, quote, nice Jewish boys, whatever that podcast is called. Hold on. Two nice Jewish boys, it is called that, okay? And, you know, I got some, but what about Palestinians comments in my video? I understand why, because you're hurt and you feel a need to say this out loud, which is fine. Like we're all in bubbles. We all have our own connections to how we think things should go. We all have family members we want to protect. But it's important to understand the context of the commentary because I went on their channel to try to figure out who were these boys and what do they really think about Palestinians? Because I was telling my partner about this and he's like, did they literally say Palestinians? And I was like, they literally said Palestinians. Like, and my partner was shocked. He's like, I can't believe they would say that. I was like, I can't believe they would say that. Palestinians specifically. And I thought maybe I misheard. Maybe I even misheard my own clip, but no, no, I heard it correctly. They specifically said Palestinians. And I was like, huh. So not people in Gaza, not people who are like Hamas or specifically responsible for October 7th, Palestinians. And I was like, that's weird. So then I went on their channel, which is on YouTube, which I frankly feel like if you're advocating for the genocide of a whole people because of how they were born, whether they're Jewish or Palestinian, maybe you shouldn't have a place on the internet. But, you know, I, get, I can hear the free speech absolutists pissing their pants right now. So I went on their channel. And they have two videos that I want to show you to make it clear for all my Israelis in the audience and all my, you know, Israeli supporters in the audience, it is fine to want to feel connected to Israel and have family there and you want to protect your family, but don't align your belief systems with two losers on a podcast who happen to have connections to Israel because they're not good representations, hopefully of Israel, because these boys claim, because they've had connections to Netanyahu, they claim this is what most of Israel thinks. And I hope to God that's not true. And if it is true, then you guys need to do some introspection work because you you literally are, if you believe all Palestinians should be genocided, then like Palestinians have a right to feel that way about you, period. The world is a reflection of us as a whole and your karma is a reflection of what you put into life. How can you ask somebody to dignify you as a group and to think of you as more than just who you're born as. And then you have the audacity to sit there and say that Palestinians should be eradicated. So here they have two videos I want to show you. The truth about Palestinian people and stop whitewashing the Palestinian people by calling them Hamas. Are you ready? Two of them, both people, a part of this podcast have two opinions. And I want to remind everyone again, my opinion is that we're all in bubbles, born into environments where we think our side is always right. And our side is all probably wrong. If our countries all had to go to country heaven where God would dictate which country was going to heaven and hell, all of us would go to hell. Because as countries, we have tortured and pillaged and colonized and done horrible things to people over the years because human beings are an animal mess. Now, I don't believe in a God and I don't believe in chosen people. I simply, be I think, I simply believe that we're like little biological creatures that have evolved over time to be who we are. So we certainly aren't better than one another when we're all here and we all come into the world the same way, right? Let's check out this video so you guys can get an example. He says, this is the truth about Palestinian people. We need to talk about the Palestinian people. One of the biggest misconceptions in the mainstream narrative is that the Palestinian people as a whole are a mostly peaceful people, being held hostage by tyrannical leaders that don't represent them. This, unfortunately, is false. The Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip, in the West Bank, and in refugee camps in various Arab countries are far from peaceful. They largely support the murder of innocent civilians, including women and children. They are largely anti-Semitic, and they do not want peace. Eitan here from the Two Nice Jewish Boys podcast, and today we're going to talk about the Palestinian people. Now, this is three years ago he posted this video. I want to make sure three years ago. Okay. The next video I'll show you is from 10 months ago. Now, before you rage quit this video, we challenge you stick around, listen to the facts. You might even learn a thing or two. Okay. Let me tell you about Samil Kuntal. Samil Kuntal is no Nobel Peace Prize laureate. No, 
Kuntal was a member of the Palestinian Liberation Front. In 1979, at the age of 16, he raided Israel by boat as part of a planned terrorist attack on the town of Nahariya. Okay. After breaking into the home of the Haran family, Kuntal kidnapped Danny Haran and his four-year-old daughter, Einat. He then led them to the beach where he shot Danny in the back, drowned him in the sea to just make sure he was dead, and then proceeded to gruesomely murder his four-year-old daughter, Einat. That's pretty horrific. That's really, really bad. I don't think anyone would say that was good. Wonder what this has to do with Palestinians as people. We'll spare you the details. Kuntal was arrested by police on the spot. And in 2008, he was released back to his home in the Palestinian refugee camp in Lebanon in a prisoner exchange. How did the Palestinians greet this cold-blooded murderer? Samir Kuntar is admired as a freedom fighter, and he was received with a festive ceremony. But Kuntal committed these atrocities back in 1979. Things are different today, right? Well, not quite. Take a look at how the Palestinians celebrated after the September 11th attacks on the Twin Towers in New York. The United States blamed by some Palestinians for its ongoing support as it is seen of Israel in this uh, conflict, in this Middle Eastern conflict. However, while some Palestinians were taking to the streets in apparent celebration, one youth was quoted as saying as he received a sweet, sweets handed around in celebration, this is a sweet from Osama bin Laden. Okay, you're probably thinking to yourself, these are just anecdotes. These are videos, they're misleading. I want to explain to you bubbles, right? So he's thinking, if I was born in Palestine, I wouldn't think this way. Where you're born influences how you think about the world and what you know influences about like what you think about the world. Same way that he's Israeli and because he's Israeli, he has an idea about what it means to be Israeli and he can't think of his people as ever in the wrong, no matter how much they do. Americans, Guantanamo Bay, 9-11, our response to 9-11, what we did in Iraq, Hiroshima, we don't think of ourselves as the bad guy because it shatters our illusion that we know what's morally correct, right? We believe we know what is morally correct and we believe we always do the moral thing. And I just want to encourage you to remember that all of us are flawed animals. We're doing the best with what we can. And it is very hard to always do the moral thing because morals are subjective, they are subjective. And I'm not saying, I know San Harris has been quoted in saying like these Middle Eastern countries think women shouldn't be educated and that women deserve to be whatever, held at a different standard. And he thinks that's objectively wrong. It's not about objective outside of space and time. It's about the subjectivity of efficiency and moving people towards freedom, freedom of choice. But the same people that will regulate your bodies, your gender, your finances, your education in one way, We'll point to somebody else and say, but at least we're not as bad as them. The point is, we all have a line in the sand in which we are willing and more than happy to limit people's civil rights as long as it works within our morals, right? No country with a huge army is exempt from being guilty of torturing innocent people. American soldiers have been caught time and time again doing horrible things to people so I don't know why we're pretending like we also don't have these stories. And if we honestly counted one to one, I'm not sure which country would have the most violence. I'm not sure who would be the most responsible for the most deaths. And I'm so sick of people saying like, do you know women and children are being killed? Yeah, they're always killed. Women, children, and men. Whether you're Israeli and being killed or Palestinian and being killed or Iraqi and being killed or an American on 9-11, it doesn't matter. Okay. So again, we're talking about born as and a whole group of people. Don't get me wrong. Does Palestine play a pretty messy game with the world government? Sure. The world government, <laughs> the governments of the world. Yes. I've been watching a lot of One Piece. Okay. Forgive me. But like, yes. Okay. Does Palestine need to learn how to play chess better? Sure. But they are literally the underdog. And this is the irony is this is kind of the difference between like Republicans and Democrats in the most basic ABC generalized way. Republicans want to be a part of the group that wins, no matter how cruel they have to be to win. And Democrats want to fight for the underdog. And so, of course, progressives want to protect Palestinians because they are without the under, like without a doubt, the underdog. Israel is not the underdog in this story. But that means they also have the responsibility then 
of maybe being more morally correct, maybe, but now they have the higher responsibility of also not being the underdog. Like to put it in a different perspective, Palestinians are in poverty and Israel is like upper middle class and they keep complaining that they can't feed their kids while Palestinians have no food to give their kids. It's like, yes, we all suffer, but you are literally not the underdog in this story. Okay? It's just a couple of Palestinian extremists. They're only a fraction. Well, you're wrong. The Palestinian people have been polled time and time again regarding their support for terrorism. And the results speak for themselves. Okay, according to a poll conducted in 2005 by Fafo, a Norwegian research institute, when asked, to what degree do you support Al-Qaeda bombings in the USA and Europe? 65% of Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank express support. Okay, if so just remember when we read Bin Laden's letter to the West? Do you guys remember that? And he said 9-11 is like kind of the karma for the United States. Listen to me when I say this, with peace and love. Okay, with peace and love. It's immoral to my standard, as was dropping that bomb in Hiroshima as is everything that we do in the name of justice. Again, you cannot sit on your mountain of high horse, like moral superiority and look at other people and say, how could you be this way? All you're saying is on the micro, I think I'm better than you. And to be honest, they think they're better than you. And so you will fight. And don't get me wrong, Palestinians, in my personal opinion, are in my mind not modern enough to be a world where I could live there safely and peacefully. But with the way that uh, Republicans have been going in the United States, they're just slightly better, okay? At the end of the day, you're still a threat if you're willing to take away my civil rights in the name of your God because you think it's a sin. Honestly, Christians have more in, in, in common with Muslims. They really should all be friends. At the end of the day, and I really believe this, I don't think these people are really enacting free will. I think they're just products of their environments. I think Israelis are products of their environments. I think Palestinians are products of their environment. I don't even think most of these people have had a chance to think, what if I wasn't Palestinian? What if I wasn't Israeli? Israeli, Who am I outside of this bubble? I don't think they, I don't think they have the time or the ability or the, they, they're not enacting like a free will in that sense, like in a philosophy, this is a philosophy channel. They're not enacting that relationship with themselves to think like, but because I know, because I hear Israelis say, but what about Palestinians? And Palestinians say, but what about Israel? What about yourself? How are you any better? Palestinians think they're better than Jews and Jews think they're better than Palestinians. And then here we go, war. Okay. Okay, let's let him finish his like thing. If you look at Gaza alone, it was 79% who supported Al-Qaeda bombings. Think about that for a second. Four out of five Palestinians support terrorism. Just okay. Um, the other day, Rashad Crenshaw and I argued about whether Hiroshima was good. Americans literally support throwing a nuke on Japan. Is that terrorism? I don't know what we're defining as terrorism. Okay. But that's what I mean to say when I said to Rashad, it's still evil. Call it terrorism. Call it self-defense. You murdered all of those fucking people. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't matter. Take yourself out of the politics. It's bad. It's only justifiable in the game of politics. You are only allowed to justify the murdering of all these people because of politics. That's why you can justify it. You can say, oh, well, we're allowed to do that because our country was under threat. And so politically, we would have to do this for sure. Politically, you can justify Israel. Politically, you can because you're you have a stance. Right. Like you have a stance. But morally, humanitarianly, outside of the bubble of politics. What is your justification? What is the justification? Just to give you some perspective, only about 54% of Americans say they love pizza. More Palestinians support terrorism than Americans love pizza. And Americans love pizza. But enough about that. Starting in 2015, Israel experienced a wave of knife attacks by Palestinian terrorists. These attacks were predominantly against civilians. There were hundreds of attacks from the end of 2015 and through 2016, and they killed 47 Israelis and wounded hundreds. But that's super bad. I think that's super bad. I think the corruption of police in America is super bad. 
I think the corruption of mankind is super not good, guys. This doesn't mean all of Palestinian people, right? Like, think about what you're saying. It gets worse. This is, this is tame compared to the video I'm going to show you. But in a poll from 2016 conducted by JMCC, a group of Palestinian journalists and researchers, Palestinians in the West Bank in Gaza were asked, to what extent do you support or oppose the continuation of knife attacks against Israelis? West Bank Palestinians were about 50-50, while almost 80% of Gazans expressed support. This should not surprise anyone. Palestinians- And by the way, in yesterday's video, when I said I can't believe they're saying this on a podcast, I'm not saying I can't believe people are genocidal. I can't believe YouTube is keeping up this content. But also more than that, again, I think this is like very hard to process for people. This man is like, I don't even think he has a, an original thought. Like I'm, I'm saying just like the Palestinians that hate Israelis, this man who hates a Palestinian does not have his own thoughts. To hate Palestinians simply because they are Palestinian, to hate Israel, Israelites because they are is, Israelites, like is to almost have like no, do you remember how I said racism is the lowest level of introspection? Like to simply say, because you are the skin color or because you are from this bubble, you are bad. Like that is what this is. They, they'll they play it as like some sort of, this is a cultural thing. The same bullshit people say about Israelis or Jewish people is what these people are basically saying about Palestinians. It's like the Spider-Man meme in the hardest way, which then would beg the question, does this place on earth have any chance of ever finding peace without one side winning? And then a lot of people don't think so. So then the question is, okay, what do you do politically? Who's gonna win? Well, obviously probably not the underdog. But if the underdog thinks it's in self-defense, like Israel will say out of self-defense, we get to bomb Palestine, right? And Pal Palestine feels out of self-defense, we get to terrorize Israel. That's what both of you feel like you are the victim in the story. Both of you literally feel like you're the absolute victim in the story. So it's two victims stabbing each other so they can stop getting stabbed. That's what I'm hearing right now. Educate their children to hate Jews. This isn't some over- Okay, so they're saying Palestinians are indoctrinating their children to hate Jews, but their YouTube channel is what? Indoctrinating us to hate Palestinians? Like, this is the fucking irony. He is literally indoctrinating us to hate Palestinians. That is what he is doing with this work. And then he's upset for Palestinians for indoctrinating their kids to hate Jews? Excuse me? Exaggeration. Just see for yourself. <laughs> And by the way, this shit is not uncommon in almost every, have you never, think about the Romani in Europe, think about blacks in America, think about, I don't know, X group and X group. What do you think racism is? What do you think like superiorities? Jewish people think they're literally chosen by God because they're Jewish. They want an ethno state. Like they literally think they have a right to a land to keep their people alive, right? In a sense, because they think they're like, their people, you know what I mean? Like it's, I don't understand how you people don't understand it's all the same thing. And again, I, I know why, because we're all twos like bubbles. It's all the same thing. The racist who teach their kid to hate black people, the Muslim that teaches their kid to hate the Jew, the Catholic that teaches their kid to be afraid of the Muslim, this person teaches their kid to be afraid of the gays, this person who teaches their kid, congratulations, you're all raising shitty kids who become shitty adults and make shitty YouTube channels trying to convince everybody that Palestinians are shitty people. Long live the martyrs. The Israeli occupation understands only resistance. They literally are saying you guys are terrorists. These kids are being raised to see Israel as a terrorist organization. Israel is raised to think of Palestinians as terrorists. You're both raising your children to see the other as terrorists. You're both raising your children to think of the other as literal terrorists. Hello? We always love the resistance to liberate our nation, Palestine. Do you hear the words they're saying? This Israeli man, God bless him, <laughs> is literally saying, look how evil Palestine is for wanting their children to be liberated. And Israelis are raising their kids to say, like, we need to liberate ourselves against Palestinians. The same that you are teaching your children the same thing. 
and you are justifying it for whatever reason. Okay, it's like a kid show. My my friend Quas, I don't want to say this name. Anyway, I tell him to take a stone. And when the Jew comes to take it and throw it at them. Yeah, that's pretty shitty. That's pretty fucking shitty. That's why the people, well, what about them? What about this? What about this? What about this? We are working to be better, not to be worse. This is not good. I feel like King Solomon when the women come with the baby. King Solomon or was it King David? I'm going to cut this baby in half. And only one of the mothers said, don't, don't, don't. Let the baby live. So which one are you guys? Because it feels like both of you would probably say cut the baby in half. <laughs> of course, the Jewish neighbors, it goes on to say, to smash them. Yeah, that's called like racism, bro. Racism's bad. It's bad. It's bad to think because you're black, you'll be X, Y, and Z. It's bad to think if you're Palestinian, you'll be X, Y, and Z. It's bad to think if you're Jewish, you'll be X, Y, and Z. Yeah, this is bad. Nobody thinks this is good. But I don't know how Israel isn't doing the same thing in many ways. Like this whole channel is doing the same thing to adults. Oh, you think Palestinians are good people? Oh my gosh, let me show you otherwise. Look, racists. And if his neighbors are Jews or Zionists, yes. I'm for stabbing attacks. Yeah, this is pretty fucking shitty. Same way 19-year-old boys from the South sign up for the military so they can shoot Arabs. Pretty fucking shitty. Pretty fucking shitty to raise your white boys in the middle of America to think they should sign up to shoot Arabs in the Middle East. You're pretty fucking shitty parents, all of you. Shitty parents here, shitty parents here. You're shitty parents. Go ahead, though. Sit on that high, mor high moral high ground. Go ahead. I'm for anyone who's uh, stub stabbing or thinks about stabbing them. I hope I will become a martyr. Yeah, this is devastatingly sad. The children are being raised to die for their governments or die for their people. You are training boys to join our military to die for your bullshit. These boys are being trained to die for their bullshit. Yeah, it's bullshit. <laughs> there won't be any Jews, blah, blah, blah. They'll be erased, chased away. Okay, but this man wants to press a button and kill all Palestinians. That's what I'm saying. Why are you acting like Palestine isn't reacting to Israel's occupation and Israel isn't reacting to Palestine's terrorism or whatever you want to call it? You're both, you're both the problem. And both of you are like children pointing fingers at one another and saying, but they started it. They started it. We'll end it. End it with peace and love. I'm so sick of both of you. I'm sick of both of you. But I am mostly sick of the person who is especially not the underdog in this situation. Israel, you are not the underdog in this situation. So either figure your fucking shit out or say it with your full chest that you plan to genocide Palestinians. Because that's what your boys are saying. Your boys are saying that they have the full intent and they have the desire, and most people in Israel have the desire to genocide Palestinians. Then say it with your full chest so we can look at you the way you should be looked at in terms of how you think about human life. Okay? Say it with your full chest then. Because Palestinians are apparently. I don't know why you're acting like you're both not the same. You guys are so similar. You should start marrying each other and start an interracial, an interra uh, interracial like two-state, whatever, solution. Okay? What is wrong with you? <laughs> they're, it's like a kid's show, and they're basically indoctrinating these kids to want to slaughter the Jews. Racism, bad, guys. Uh, uh, xenophobia, bad. <laughs> what does a policeman do? He catches thieves. And people who make trouble. And shoots Jews, right? Yes. You want to be like him? The girl nods. Allah willing when you grow up so I can shoot the Jews. Yeah, that's pretty fucking shitty. Also, I don't speak Arabic, so I don't know how to translate this. But also, it is shitty. This is unjustifiable. 
ان شاء الله لما تكبري لما تخلي هون كلهم all of them all of them yes كلهم كلهم اه طيب now the product of this education <coughs> other than overwhelming support for terrorism is deep seated anti-semitism in a poll conducted by the anti defamation league no less than 93% of palestinians were found to have anti-semitic beliefs You are literally seen as their oppressor. I don't even know how you can't understand this. They literally see you. They have been trained to see you. History shows that you have come into the territory to build this little place where you even get the word Zionist. Like, isn't it interesting that Israel doesn't understand they're having a very unique experience? Even being able to say the word Zionist is such, so interesting from their bubble perspective. And they're like, hmm, I wonder why people are mad at us. because you literally want to be treated differently than everybody else in the world in so many specific ways it's weird but also you don't deserve to be terrorized no israeli person deserves to die at the hand of a palestinian who's angry they were simply born jewish or Jew israel is israeli and no palestinian should have to die at the hand of an israeli simply because they were palestinian so let's not fool ourselves or let ourselves be fooled the palestinian people are not a peaceful people And if you hear anyone claiming otherwise, do them a solid and send them this video. Okay. Great great job proving fucking nothing. Next video. This was 10 months ago. The Palestinians are at war. Israel and the Palestinians are at war. The Palestinians, not terrorists, not Hamas, not Islamic Jihad. Israel's at war with the Palestinians. And it's important to recognize this very simple fact. because if you don't know who or what you're fighting then you can't win. And we're not fighting terror, we're not fighting Hamas, we're fighting a backwards culture that promotes death and destruction, that teaches their kids to stab, kill, rape, behead. And we got a great demonstration of this on on Saturday when Palestinian forces invaded Israel, they burned and beheaded babies and children. they massacred entire villages entire families festival goers the elderly it was really devastating watching october 7th footage and honestly i stayed away from 90% of it it was really sad and then i watched palestinians get slaughtered it was very sad it's very sad to lose your babies whether you're israeli or palestinian Palestinians do not mourn any less when their children die than Israelis do. They're acting like Palestinians don't care when their children die. And if you say, well, they make martyrs and they have suicide bombers and they do all these things, what do you think America's doing when they send our youngest and newest out of high school boys into a war that 20 years later we all have to be ashamed of? What do you think we're doing to our own children when we raise them without any kind of understanding of how the world works and we just think they're young they'll figure it out they should join the military that sounds super great and they kidnapped anybody they could get their hands on including grandmothers and women and children and babies they just went through raping and murdering and pillaging it was horrible the footage was horrible and i will never forget On the other side of that, a Palestinian father screaming at a a a pile of rubble with his kids' voices screaming to him, "Baba, baba, baba." And the father is sitting there like, "I can't hear them anymore." You don't think that's fucking sad? So whether you're Israeli or Palestinian, it's fucking sad. So again, acting like, you know, when Israel suffers, it's more intense or more meaningful than when Palestinians suffer and to act like you are not at fault for the like at the, at the end of the day even without pointing fingers like taking yourself out of it humans are humans and this is a part of our human history right like humans are making decisions they're thinking this is correct they're like I'll murder your babies before you murder my babies and i'm just sitting here looking at both of you like Why do you think Americans are so upset with American government policy sometimes? Why do you think we're so upset with the way that our tax dollars are being used? Because we know the history of America. We know what genocide it was built on. We know that we're not perfect. We know that we're better than a lot of places. 
we're also not fucking perfect. And so American people that are anti-American, like colonization in the way that it's been done, we're trying to say, don't repeat history. We're trying to say, don't do that. But politically, to be a superpower, oh my gosh. Like, that's violence is so a part of politics, right? So it's gross what has happened. It's all gross, but it's all bubbles. If this boy was Palestinian, he would have been a martyr or he would have been just like them, but not he's Israeli. So he only knows how to be Israeli. When you're in a bubble and you live in a bubble and you think your identity is predicated on the body you were born into, this thing, this thing that is so meaningless in so many ways will tell you what people you're allowed to hate and kill because you were born into this body. When I say pop the goddamn bubble, when I say get out of your two bubbles if you want to really live, like live, you don't have to, of course, but man, if all of these Palestinians and all these Israelis actually pop the fucking bubble and realize none of this shit matters, Jesus Christ, the way the world would be better, the way that area of the world would be healed. What you were born into, this body, doesn't matter. But continue to make it matter and continue to say that it's all that matters and continue to act like it matters and continue to not break generational curses, both of you. Like the good old medieval backwards people they are. Now, the scale of this carnage is still unclear, uh, but the death toll is right now above a thousand. It's just devastating, just devastating. Families broken, just the, the entire nation is grieving. And in the news, you're going to hear a lot about Hamas. Hamas this, Hamas that, we're fighting Hamas, we need to destroy Hamas. But make no mistake, Israel's not at war with Hamas. Israel's at war with the Palestinian people. Just like the Palestinian people are not at war with Likud, they're not at war with Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition, they're at war with Israel. And Israel is at war with the Palestinian people. Everyone loves to talk about the Palestinian people's right to self-determination, their right to be recognized as a people, to have agency and autonomy over themselves. Suddenly, when the Palestinian people decide that they want to be led by a group called Hamas and reign murder and massacre and rape down on Israel, Jews and non-Jews alike, suddenly it's a terrorist organization, it's Hamas, it's a separate entity that needs to be uprooted, eradicated, and just- The problem is, and again, when you go into this bubble thinking and you start to think this way, it is, it's very complicated. I'm not saying it's not. And my heart goes out to the people that are suffering, Israeli or Palestinian, obviously. So that's without set. But I'm trying to understand, I'm trying to grab you all by the hair and pull you out of your little bubbles and remind you that all of you are raising your kids to hate the other, regardless if you keep saying you're not. Because when it comes down to it, I haven't seen an Israeli person who isn't a Zionist or pro-Israel actually understand the plight of Palestinians. I haven't seen a Palestinian person who's actually pro-Palestine and believes Israel should, you know, be gone. I actually understand Israel. I haven't seen you deeply understanding one another. I've seen a bunch of people in the middle or modern people or anti-Zionist Jews. I've seen people who are like a little bit more modern have those conversations for sure. But again, we are fighting, two groups are fighting, we're not fighting, nobody. Two groups are fighting each other because both two groups are feel entitled. Now, the dilemma is they're also brutally hurt. They are dealing with so much trauma, there's not enough therapists in the world to help Palestine and Israel. The trauma these two groups are enacting on each other, the generational curses, these people have children just to give them a generational curse, I swear to God. I swear to God, these humans create babies just to give them generational curses. You know how every generation is supposed to be better than the last? Israel and Palestine feel like the opposite to me. Every time they have a baby, they're like, here, Take all of our burdens from the last 100 years. There you go, child. What are you doing? Just, we need to free the poor Palestinian people who are held hostage <sighs> by this regime. Excuse me, but what a load of bullshit. Give them credit and wake up. This is the Palestinian people. This is their culture. This is their self-determination. This is their legacy not only did i don't know 
what anyone actually thinks almost ever. Considering that we live in a world where people on their deathbeds have to be like, I've been bisexual my whole life, but I never told anyone. Who knows what people really think? Where is it safe in these bubbles to say what you really think? Where is it safe to say what you really think almost anywhere? Like truly, God forbid, I remember I was, God, 19, probably I'm like 35 now. When I was like 19 years old, I wrote a blog having compassion for trans people, okay? I was a registered Republican at the time. My dad was shook. And he goes, Bati, why are you writing a blog about trans people? Don't you think they're sick? And I was like, well, even if they're sick, like, don't you think they should get the help they need? Like, wouldn't you feel crazy if you were trapped in a body that didn't make sense to you? And even as a Republican coming out, now I was queer. I was already gay. So I already knew what it was like to be trapped in a home where I couldn't come out, let alone a body where I couldn't express myself, right? But growing up in a home that was homophobic and transphobic was already hard enough. And now you're growing up in a home that's xenophobic, racist, hateful, murdering, thinks that all these things are justified because it's all part of liberation. You know what I'm saying? It's like when military soldiers in the military go, oh, my time was fine there. I didn't see anything happen. Okay, so we know things have happened with the U.S. military. Your militaries are not innocent. What Palestinian people are justifying as recourse for their liberation is not justifiable. What Israel is arguing about their place in the Middle East might not be justifiable, depending on the nuances of the conversation. Do people need a physical place that they all get to belong to? Now, the dilemma, again, is that religion is playing a huge role in this conversation. These are two groups who think they're the chosen people in different ways. So, again, when we talk about that, when we talk about the layers of nuance involved in this, how are you even going to start to deconstruct and dismantle the idea that you are a chosen people as if there is such a thing? There is no such thing as a chosen people. Your arrogance and narcissism is showing. How dare you think God has chosen you? when we don't even know there is a God, but we're dealing with people who literally think they're chosen and they're all using religion and their ethnicities, I guess, to sort of claim an entitlement to land and to existing. That's crazy. That's crazy. It is a crazy perspective to think you are a chosen people. And yet it is one that is being justified by both of these groups. Allah the Prophet chose the Palestinians and what is what did Israel, what did Jews call God? Um I forget. God chose the Jews. Jesus. Religious people can be so narcissistic in the way they think of themselves. Ah oh, yes. God chose me. God doesn't even give a fuck about you, bitch. The Palestinian people in Gaza elect Hamas in 2005, but Hamas enjoys really broad support. Um, in the West Bank, if elections were held tomorrow, Hamas would win by a landslide, especially after the events on Saturday. That just helps them win. I mean, just look at the Palestinian streets after what happened on Saturday, after 9-11, after any murderous attack against Western society. You know, it's interesting, though, because if you talk to Arabs... They feel like the boot of America, the boot of the West has been on their fucking neck for so long. They're tired. And you can't act like America hasn't literally impacted the Middle East or even these Arab countries. You act like the America has done absolutely nothing to piss off the world. You act like America has literally been an angel this whole fucking time when this country was founded on genocide. Please sit the fuck down. I'm not saying that that is why you deserve anything. You don't deserve anything. Nobody deserves anything. We're simply animals on a planet. The entitlement that you think you deserve anything is the problem. And look, it won't stop, by the way. This is why I tell you as an individual, like, you got to live out your life and pray, like, praise be to your communities and all that. But your communities don't give a fuck about you if there's a bigger picture ahead. Palestinian people don't give a fuck about you as an individual if it ruins their, their goal as Palestinian people. Israel doesn't give a fuck about you if it gets in the way of Israel's goal. America doesn't give a fuck about you if it gets in the way of America's goal. These communities and communities at large, they don't give a fuck about you. If you're a part of a progressive group of people and you t speak out of line and you're a little bit more centrist, they don't care. If, they don't give a fuck about you. You're ruining the movement. If you're a Republican and you're all of a sudden pro-gay or pro-sex work, they don't give a fuck about you. You're ruining the community's goal. Communities are beautiful until they look at you like you're one of the enemies just because you're a little bit, a little bit different than the group.
So with peace and love to all of these communities around the world and peace and love, like with everything, what's the point of being a part of a community that's so willing to turn its back on you the moment you deviate slightly from the plan? Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in diversity. And so I think it is better to have a country like America or somewhere else that promotes and focuses on diversity. I'm willing to live and let live. And I'm willing to all live together. But the, you know, I don't know how many gun shootings, more school shootings we need from, you know, I don't even know what these white boys are going through. These white boys are obviously suffering. They're all fucking isolated. They all look a particular way. They all have parents who aren't educated. The dad gave his son the gun, the recent shooter in the US, the dad gave it as a gift to his son. Like put it together that this is about parenting and put it together this is about how we raise our children. We are raising our children to hate one another. We are raising our, and we will continue to do it forever because humans have always done this. Now on the macro, things are getting better and the universe certainly doesn't care about us and our problems, okay? But on the micro, we are responsible for the world. We are responsible for what we put into the world. Abin Preach just made a video actually tackling an Iman who said, basically, I think he said, a man who rapes or messes with a child or does any of these things has a greater chance of getting into heaven or something like that as long as he prays. Or maybe he was Christian. I don't know what he was. And the whole point is like, Abba, Abba was like, what? Like, that's, that is crazy, right? But- from a religious standpoint, they believe if you do anything in the name of their God, if you do anything in the name, then God will understand and forgive you. Fine. But that doesn't mean you're still not impacting society. So really, I think the larger question for secular societies is whether or not religion has a, has a major place in government. And I would certainly hope no is the answer. Now, don't get me wrong, right? Like we're just humans living in history. So Things will change. Geography will look different. Different people will be in different parts of the world. You know, am I a Semite or an Arab? Who knows? According to the Iraq census, I'm an Arab. According to history, I'm a Semite. <gasps> what do we do with me? Where do I belong? I'd rather be dead than involved in these two groups because what a mess are they? But thank God I'm alive in somewhere else and I don't have to be. The point is, I think all of us would rather be somewhere else than in the middle of this conflict that has no resolution in the future since both of these people are entitled to existing because they both think they're the chosen people. How are you supposed to come to a conclusion with two groups who feel so entitled? I don't even know. But these Israelis on this website claiming they know, they're talking about Palestinians the way Palestinians talk about them. You'll see dancing in the streets. You'll see handing out of sweets. Just general jubilee. Because at the pinnacle, at the pinnacle of Palestinian culture is the death and destruction of the infidel. Men, women. Okay, FYI, you, you know, no, anti, no Islamophobia in my chat. Okay, no, no anti-Jewish stuff in my chat. No racism in my chat. Okay, don't call Muhammad a pedo prophet or any of that. Like, okay, I'm not interested. At the end of the day, you're not radically accepting that it doesn't matter what religion you're part of. Mary was 15. Even if you're a Christian, Mary was 15. Okay? I don't want to hear everybody arguing about whose religion is less pedophilic. Okay? But no Islamophobia in my chat. Okay? We're not AJ atheists in this bubble. We all think you're the same. Whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, at the end of the day, you're all homophobic and you're all fucking annoying. So figure your shit out. Okay, but no Islamophobia in the chat. Children alike. The highest accolades going to those who achieve that, the death of the infidel, through martyrdom, through self-sacrifice, aka suicide bombers. AKA military soldiers who go to fight wars because that's what you do as a country. You're a pussy American men if you don't go fight for your country. What? Don't you think that's a form of suicide? And also a lot of suicide bombers are forced into those positions because they're threatened, okay? So just a reminder, I don't know what Palestinian people think. I don't know what they want, especially since women in Afghanistan right now can't even speak and I know they wanna be talking. We do not know how many of these people are being forced into positions in the West. If I can't come out as gay or trans, God forbid, in my Republican households, you think in America, which is so free, and we still feel scared to come out because our parents might hurt us. You think people in Palestine are going to feel safe? Of course not, because they're even more religious. So what's the issue? The fact that they're Palestinian or the fact that y'all believe in religions that think God made you the chosen people? Let's be for real, for real, please. 
The larger the scale of the murder, the gorier and the more gruesome the death, the bigger the celebration. That is who we're dealing with. Stop calling them Hamas and whitewashing Palestinian culture. Okay, right? Now, okay. Okay. So again, um, unless you've read the Quran yourself and have had the right translation, I don't want to hear anybody in my comment section talking about what they know about the Quran. And also, again, nobody gives a fuck about the Bible. The Bible itself or the Quran, they're all filled with incest, rape, and bullshit. Stop pointing fingers at one religion and being like, this religion's worse than this religion. Oh, in this conversation, they're all fucking bullshit. Okay? Okay? Everyone out here pretending like, oh, we're allowed to hate Muslims because Muslims have this crazy religion where look at their book says all these crazy things. Have you read your book? It's crazy, bro. It's all crazy. Muslim, Christian, Look, I'll live and let live. I'm happy with you existing on the planet. You believe what you want to believe, but stay out of fucking government and stop pretending you know the truth. Okay? Okay? Most of the world has been targeted and bullied and tortured by religious people throughout history, and I'm sick and tired of all of you. So to all these people who think they're the chosen one, that God pick them, that their bloodline is the best, that all of these people should be genocided because they're hurting people, Literally look in the mirror. What a ridiculous, ridiculous belief system you have. What a ridiculous bubble this is. What a ridiculous bubble this is. Now, with that said, I really want no harm to come to Israelis and I want no harm to come to Palestinians. But regardless of what I want, you will both continue to hurt each other. And so I wipe my hands of you. Good luck, bitch. And may your God protect you. Because apparently that's all you fucking care about. God forbid you think for yourselves. God forbid. Okay? I don't want to hear anybody in my comment section bitching and moaning about, yeah, but what about the Palestinians? <gasps> what about the Israelis? What about your mom? Because I saw her last night. And the only God she's worshiping is my dick. Okay. That's it. Thank you. I'm contributing to the conversation. This is why I don't cover politics. Because if you want to play a political game, okay, but don't come at me and tell me you figured out how to treat people with dignity while well, you're both celebrating the death of the other. How dare you? You're so offensive. You're so offensive. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense, I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess, please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth, and living life as a fool. Da 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 da